Okay. Um, uh, with this presentation, I wanted to give an update on the latest news about uh, Luster Client encryption. So here's the outline for today. After a quick reminder of what um, we have in 2.15 uh, maintenance release, uh, I will uh, talk for the rest of the presentation about the currently identified limitations with um, the Luster Client encryption feature and more importantly, how we plan to address them. Okay, so let's get started. I guess you are already familiar with the uh, Lustre Client encryption feature based on my previous presentations in such conferences. Um, in 2.15 uh, LTS, we have uh, support for both content and name encryption. And um, uh, since my last talk back in September, uh, we added a few more things um, to the feature. So the first thing we added recently is um, that we now align uh, the no key representation, um, so this is when you access encrypted files and directories without the encryption key. We al align this um, uh, representation uh, with what is provided by um, the latest Linux kernel. But still, if you have a mixed environment and, uh, and multiple uh, versions of uh, your Lustre clients, we are still able to support the uh, old fashioned um, encoding. And um, another uh, announcement uh, that was recently made is uh, uh, regarding encrypted objects consistency. Um, so now not only uh, we set encryption flags on MDT objects, but also on objects on OST side. So this is very useful for E2FS CK and uh, LFS CK, for instance. So these two things are um, uh, landed in um, uh, or will be landed in um, in the uh, 2.15 LTS uh, release. Uh, another recent announcement is um, that now we are able to uh, use Lustre HSM on encrypted files when we have the encryption key. But this one is just landed to uh, the Lustre master branch. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the currently identified limitations with the, the feature. Uh, the first one is about uh, fit to pass. LFS fit to pass is a very uh, convenient command uh, and uh, very widespread uh, that lets you map list of file identifiers to one or more paths on the, on the list of file system. Uh, so it's, it's used in many tools and um, basically when a, a list of client uh, sends a feed to the server, it's up to the server to uh, build the whole path and then just return them as strings uh, to the client. Uh, but I guess you can see it coming. As the name suggests, Lustre Client encryption is mostly uh, implemented on Lustre Client side, and which means Lustre servers are, are almost unaware of, um, of encryption. So in order to address this uh, and have fit to pass uh, working with uh, encrypted files, we decided to let servers return the uh, encrypted names. Uh, they are just encoded, and then it's up to the Lustre client to uh, decrypt the names uh, from top to bottom, meaning uh, it starts with the topmost directory in the path returned from the server. Uh, this one can be decrypted thanks to the parent I node because you know that. Um, names are encrypted with uh, the encryption key of the parent directory. And so the Lustre client then needs to fetch the uh, inode that has just been decrypted, if it's a directory, because uh, it will need to uh, do the same for uh, the next component in the path. So uh, it turns the uh, simple fit to pass path uh, operation into a multiple RPC operation unless, uh, for instance, names are not encrypted. And in this case, obviously, there is no need to decrypt anything. And also, if you're doing LFS fit to path without the encryption key, in this case, uh, encrypted names are just um, uh, encoded. So um, uh, this feature uh, has been landed to the master branch, so uh, it will be available with the next Lustre release. The other limitation I, I wanted to talk about is access to raw encrypted information. So uh, we have uh, several use cases that would require uh, having access to raw encrypted information. For instance, we would be, instance, we would be able to um, 
backup and restore uh, encrypted files at the LDSCFS level, but also at the Luster client level. Uh, we would also be able to use Luster HSM um, on encrypted files. And um, similarly, um, we would be able to move encrypted files from one Luster file system to another without the need to decrypt and then re-encrypt everything. And so it means that we would like to be able to do so without the encryption key. And uh, we have a number of good reasons um, uh, to do that without the encryption key. The first reason is a security reason. We do not want um, to do backup with the encryption key, but in, because in this case, it means that we would create clear text copies of encrypted files. And this is uh, not what we want for sure. Uh, also imagine that uh, administrators need to restore uh, data after a corruption. It's in the middle of the night. It's not pos possible for them to reach out to end users and ask them for their uh, encryption keys. So just uh, for the solution to be workable, uh, it needs to be done without the encryption key. And similarly, we do not want to create uh, copies of the uh, end users encryption keys. This is very bad. This is their own keys and uh, it belongs to them. Uh, another good reason is uh, uh, related to performance. Uh, obviously, if we are uh, doing backup and restore or moving files without the encryption key, um, we do not decrypt and re-encrypt everything. So it means that uh, we save a lot of time and CPU re resources. But the thing is, today, FScript uh, forbids access to files without the encryption key. So it's not possible to open such files. And consequently, it's not possible to read and write uh, in those files. So it means that today, uh, all the file, system in, file systems in Linux that uh, rely on FScript for encryption, so namely ext4, ubfs, and f2fs, for those file systems, it's not possible to backup and restore uh, encrypted files unless you have the encryption key and then you create clear text copies. Uh, Thing is, there are no security risks uh, accessing raw encrypted data without the encryption key. Um, data is encrypted, and this is the very reason why we encrypt. It means that uh, when you have this encrypted data, you cannot do anything with it, right? Um, the other um, uh, thing is, uh, every encrypted file has an encryption context, but this encryption context the just, uh, just uh, is um, a 16 byte nonce. Um, and this information lets you get the per file encryption key once it is combined with the master key. But if the master key is not stored along with the um, uh, backed up encrypted files, then there is no security risk. Actually, the only risk when you access encrypted files without the encryption key is to corrupt them. For instance, if you write a few bytes in the middle of an encryption block, then um, this block will uh, become, um, it will not be possible to decrypt it anymore. So this is why we want to restrict this capability of accessing encrypted files without the encryption key. We want to restrict this capability to uh, applications that know what they are doing. So we would need to have access to the encryption context, obviously, because uh, this is, uh, it, it describes how files are encrypted. Uh, we would also need to have access to uh, the encrypted names. And it's not always possible to reconstruct the uh, raw encrypted name from the presented name when we do not have the encryption key. It depends on, on, on the name length. And uh, another important um, uh, point to address is uh, the size of the file um, without the encryption key. It's uh, rounded up to the next um, uh, encryption boundary. So we lose the uh, clear text file size. So this is an information that we need to back up as well. So we thought about uh, how we could address this requirement. And uh, we came up with a solution proposal that we sent to the uh, Linux FS script mailing list. Our solution relies on a new extended attribute that we name security.enc data. Uh, 
we decided to rely on an extended attribute rather than a new IO control command, for instance, because all the um, backup tools backup tools out there, uh, TAR, RSync, or any commercial backup tool is already capable of handling extended attributes. Um, so this, um, as you can see on the slide, this extended attribute um, it contains information in uh, ASCII in a YAML-like format for be better um, portability and future enhancements. And because it contains binary information, um, the very first field uh, you can see, it's name, it, it is named encoding, and this is the name of the method used to encode uh, binary information. Then you have the clear text file size, and then you have the encrypted, uh, the encryption context and the encrypted name. So we call that extended attribute virtual because it, its content is never uh, stored uh, on disk in, uh, in LDiskFS. Um, it's actually uh, computed every time it is explicitly fetched. And it also means that if you list uh, all extended attributes available on uh, the file, you would not see this one because it's only uh, returned when explicitly fetched. So how do we use this uh, specific ex extended attribute? Obviously, we need uh, slight uh, modifications in the backup tools such as star uh, because we need to make the tool explicitly fetch the extended attribute and store it along with the files that is being backed up. Um, but the tool does not need to interpret the content of this extended attribute. Also, the tool need to, needs to use a specific open flag. So remember earlier, I told you that we want to restrict the ability to manipulate encrypted files without the encryption key uh, to applications that know what they are doing. So this is how we achieve that. We require the use of a specific open flag um, so that it's not possible for, uh, to, to, to do that um, um, for any application. And the name used uh, for the backup backup file is simply the Noki name as returned by FScript. Conversely, on, um, on restore, uh, we also need slight modifications in the backup tool. Uh, the tool needs to open the, the file with the specific flag so that uh, it can write back content into the encrypted file without the encryption key. And the tool needs to restore uh, the security.eng data extended attribute. Again, the tool does not need to understand the content of the extended attribute. It's just that internally, LDSCFS will interpret the content and restore information such as the encryption context and the clear text file size. The tool also needs to op open the file with the OTMP file. Um, this is important because it means that initially the, f the backup file will be created unlinked and then internally LDSCFS will link it atomically uh, to the namespace with the correct uh, raw encrypted name. So what uh, feedback did we get from the Linux FS script mailing list? Um, the main problem is uh, they are really focused on Android and Chrome OS devices. And for them, it's not a problem to uh, create clear text copies of encrypted files when doing backups. Actually, if they need more security, they will re-encrypt everything with a different key. Uh, another problem is that they would like us to provide a complete solution from the very beginning. But we want to go uh, by baby steps. And uh, among all the encryption methods that FScript supports, we want to first support the one that is used by LDSCFS ext4. And also we want to support directories and regular files and see how we can enhance this solution by supporting uh, <coughs> other uh, file types. So we started, we decided to start implementing this solution according to uh, an HLD that is publicly available on Jira. Uh, there are already uh, a few patches. 
push to to get it. Obviously, most of them are um, dealing with LDSKFS, but we are also creating a new LCTL command that is really dedicated to testing and uh, development. So. Um, uh, rather than a long speech, I prefer to go for a demo where I, I will show you how to use uh, this development tool to back up and restore um, encrypted objects at the LDSKFS level. So uh, this is a pre-recorded demo uh, that I'm going to comment uh, live now. So here we are on a Lustre client that runs uh, CentOS 8 and that talks to to an MDS server that is also running CentOS 8. So here I simply create a directory named vault and I decide to encrypt uh, this directory. I'm going to create a subdirectory and then uh, a DOM file inside that. Uh, this is just for the sake of this demonstration so that the DOM file has both content and name encrypted on the uh, MDT side so that we can uh, see everything from just the, um, the uh, MDT device. So here I have created the uh, uh, DOM file and I'm just writing a few bytes inside the file. So if we lock the directory uh, and we list the uh, uh, Lustre content, we can see that the names are uh, scrambled and we do not have the key now, so uh, it's all encrypted. So now let's let's switch to the, the server side. So again, it runs CentOS 8. Uh, so let's mount the, um, the target as LDSKFS. Uh, if we have a look at the uh, content of the vault directory, it's all uh, scrambled. Uh, hopefully, we have some printable characters in the name, in the names. Um, so now I'm going to use the LCTL FS script command uh, with the read um, uh, sub command. So this command mocks uh, backup operations. So it reads uh, an encrypted file and uh, uh, writes it to uh, uh, a different uh, directory. So here I'm storing the backup under slash tmp which is, uh, in this case, um, a simple ext4 directory. And because this tool is a development tool, uh, it's very uh, uh, rudimentary, and this is why I have here to call it for every component in, uh, in, in the path. If we start the, the file that has been backed up, we can see that its size is 4 kilobytes, which is good, which is ex expected. This is the size of the encryption block. And if we have a look at uh, all the extended attributes, we can see among the uh, traditional Lustre extended attributes, we have the security.encData extended attribute that has been generated and, that, that, and it has uh, the expected content. Now I am simu simulating the loss of the vault directory. So directly as a DiskFS, I am removing the vault directory. And, um, for oper operational purposes, I am removing the OI files. So this is for Lustre to regenerate the OI mappings um, to have a clean Lustre file system. So again, this is to simulate the loss of the vault directory. So now I am remounting the, um, the target as Lustre and we switch uh, back to the client. So here in the client, we uh, remount Lustre. And simply, if we list the content of the file system, we can see that uh, the vault directory is gone. So this is just to, to show you that uh, we, we have really lost the, uh, the vault directory. So now let's get back to the, uh, the server side and try to restore uh, the lost directory. So I, again, I mount the target as LDSKFS. And I'm going to use the LCTL FS script write command. This command, again, this is a development uh, oriented command that uh, mocks a restore operation. So it uh, fetches information from the backup file and writes it back um, to LDSKFS. So again, because this is a development tool, it's uh, rudimentary and I have to call that for uh, every um, directory and, and files. 
Once again, I remove the OI uh, file so that OI mappings are regenerated. This is not specific to, to this demonstration. If you have a look at the Luster Operations Manual, this is the normal procedure to remove the OI files when you restore data at the LDSKFS level. And now let's switch back to the uh, uh, Luster client side. We remount the client. If we list the content of the file system, we can see that the vault directory uh, is here again. Uh, the names uh, are similar to what we had before uh, the loss of the directory. Now, if we try to unlock the directory, uh, we can see that it works. And this is very important because the master key that is used to lock and un un unlock the directory is not stored along with the, direct, the, the encrypted directory itself. So the fact that it works here shows that we are really using the same uh, encryption contexts as before. And this is really the, the, encryption, the original encryption, encryption context that have been restored. If uh, now I um, start the, uh, uh, the file that has been restored, we can see that its size is uh, correct. It, this is the or original size size when I initially write it. And if we try to read the file content, uh, we are able to read the, the original content. So again, this shows that this is really the original encryption context that has been and the original file that, that have been restored. Otherwise, uh, because we use the same master key, it would not have been possible. Um, so obviously, this is the very beginning of the work uh, on this aspect. We have many more things to do, especially uh, support uh, different um, files like uh, Simlinks. Uh, we ha will have to support more kernel versions. And obviously, the next big step is to modify existing backup tools such as star so that we can use them instead of this uh, development command that I just show you. Um, and then we'll, we want to support backup and restore at the Luster client level as well and uh, Luster HSM again without the encryption key. Um, so as a conclusion we can say that Luster 2.15 LTS has full encryption support with a pretty decent performance level. We are working on uh, identified limitations by discussing with uh, the Linux and Luster developers uh, in the community. So now I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing from production use of the Luster client encryption feature. And uh, that's all for this presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Sebastian. Do we have any questions? Just a question about the extended attribute, onc data. I was thinking, what if the file is like 100 terabytes? Uh, you know, uh, I've seen last, last two weeks ago we saw a user creating a 100 terabyte file, single file. So how how would extended attribute behaves if you want to access the encrypted data through a single ex extended attribute like that? Because um, you, you you show us. A file with six bytes, right, of data. Yeah. So what will happen if it's like a very big file? Re regarding, re of you mean regarding the content of the yeah. extended attribute? Yeah. Mm, I mean the, the the content of the extended attribute is just um, is mean just the the current yeah. ap e API to access the uh, extended attribute data will scale. Do you think? I don't think it's really uh, a matter of how uh, how many files or how big they are. I mean, okay. this is just, you, you, you just have the size of the file and then the encryption context and the encryption name. So, uh, uh, so backup, or, backup ba tools could ba be? Backup tools already have to, to, to back up the uh, extended attributes, the Luster specific ex extended attributes, you know, the Luster LOV, uh, um, DLMA, etc. So it's just okay. one more uh, extended attribute. Uh, extended pot attribute potentially very big. No, why? Why very big? Or maybe I misunderstood. But the here oh, you have the content. So this is just. It, it's not the content. 
Oh, it's, it's just the file name that's encrypted yeah. here. Here, you, here okay. you have the content of the, of the extended that you, Thank that you. you will have. So, no, no, it's important. So it's, it's just okay. one field that says which encoding method we use, then the size of the file, then the encryption context and the encryption, and that's all. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and the content of the encrypted file is just, you know, Red and it's and a standard API. You access the, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. You show that actually. Just, yeah. a, just like a regular content. file. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Sure.